So welcome back, my dear students. Welcome back, my dear students. Uh, this is your teacher, Dr. Usama Keshwa. And this is another lecture in sampling, in the sampling process. So in the sampling process, these are some examples or the ways we are using the different types of sampling we use. So the first type is sample, simple random sampling. Simple random sampling. The names of all the 1,000 children as example. So the example or names of all the 1,000 children are placed into a computer database. The computer is then instructed to randomly select 100 names. 100 names out of 1,000 names means like the sample will be 10% of the total population. These children are their parents and their parents are then contacted. So I will take a sample, 100 students out of 1,000 students. And computer is the one who will determine which one we will choose. As example, the first one, the seven one, the nine one, and so on. The advantage of the simple random sampling is that it represents the population. It represents the population, it's true. But it's disadvantage or it's limitation that it may be difficult to obtain the least. So sometimes if the uh, population is very big or very large, or you are studying uh, uh, something on the whole country or whatever, then in that case, the population size would be very big, very large. That time is very difficult to have a list with all the names of the uh, population. But since it's uh, like around 1,000, yeah, we can have 1,000 names, no problem. But still, there is a, a problem that the disadvantage of this uh, uh, method of sampling is that it be, might be difficult to obtain the least, may be expensive as well to do this. So those are the two things which make it uh, the sample or the sample uh, random uh, sampling, the simple random sampling makes it uh, in this, no need for the word simply. Sa random sampling directly, the random sampling make it difficult uh, because it's very hard to get the names of the whole list of the population, to get the name of the list of the population. The second type here is stratified random sampling. What is the stratified random sampling? It's also a random sampling, but stratified into categories. Like here, the names of 1,000 children are placed into a computer database and organized by grade as example, six or seventh or eight. The computer then, and then instructed to randomly select 35 names from each of the three uh, grades. So uh, I will take 35 students from grade six. I will take 35 students from grade seven. I will take 35 uh, students from grade eight. Uh, names from each of the three grades. These children and their parents are then contacted. So I have the, 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 the sample. Within the sample itself, inside the sample, I will start to choose inside the sample, divide them into categories. Like as example, students in grade six, students in grade seven, students in grade eight. Uh, the advantage of this uh, method, the stratified, is that it is representative for the population. But one of its drawbacks, it may be difficult to obtain the least, may be more expensive as well. So it's like the uh, random uh, sampling. It's the same thing, like the same uh, problems, that it's difficult to get the least of the names and uh, it might be expensive as well. Okay. The third type of samplings are the convenience samplings. Convenience samplings, here the researchers knows one of the middle schools, as example, teachers, and the teacher volunteers her 35 students for the study. The children and their parents are then connected. It's very easy because here you don't do uh, random random process or probability process. Look at this. The researcher 
knows one of the middle school teachers. He know him. Uh, and he tell him, please provide me with the names which I want to make a sampling. Then he said, I will propose for you 35 students and we are done. And the teacher volunteers her 35 students for the study. These children and their parents are then contacted. Uh, it's simple and easy and convenient and no complete members list is needed. You don't need here in the convenience sampling to make a list with the students' names. No need for it, absolutely. You will go ahead directly without making a list of the students' names. May not be representatives of the population also because you didn't make it a probability distribution based on the giving every uh, element uh, of the uh, population uh, and every sample unit. You didn't give every sample unit an equal chance. You choose already 35, but you didn't give them, you didn't choose them based on uh, random choose. So it might be, not be representative for the population. By other meaning, you said, take the students, those students. Those students might represent the population or might not represent it. You are not quite sure of this because it, it didn't depend on the probability distribution or the equal chance for each sample unit uh, to represent the whole population or to be chosen. You didn't give them the chance for equal probability choose uh, for the sample units. That was for the four types of the uh, sampling. And I will go now for a question uh, about the sampling. And we will say, uh, discuss, discuss the sampling methods discuss the sampling methods refer to pros and cons or advantages and disadvantages of each and discuss the advantage and disadvantages of each. Discuss the sampling method, refer to advantages and disadvantages of each of these methods. So this is the question here in this part. Uh, I wish I could get your answer, guys. I'll be here like around uh, five minutes to answer this question. Discuss sampling methods and uh, refer to the advantages and disadvantages of each of these sampling methods. So that is the uh, points now. We'll wait here like around five minutes to get the answers back. Just a quick reminder. Just a quick reminder. We talk about today about four types of sampling. The first one is the simple random sampling or random sampling. We will choose as example, we have 100, one, the population is 1,100 children. We put them in a database the computer is uh, then instructed to randomly select 100 names. So the computer will choose 100 names from them. These children and their parents are, will be contacted. Uh, the advantages, it represents the population, but the problem is that it's very difficult to have the whole list and it might be expensive. The second way, one is stratified uh, random sampling. Yes, we have the population 1,000 students, but we will divide them into three categories, grade six, grade seven, grade eight. And from each grade, we will take 35 students. From each grade, we will take 35 students. Actually, this represents the population, yeah? It's good to represent the population. Then from uh, each category, these children and their parents are, uh, are contacted. But it's still that may be difficult to obtain the least also and expensive. So it's like the random sampling. It's like the random sampling, it might be expensive. 
and might cost us money. The third one is the convenient sampling. Here, the teacher knows uh, the recession or the teacher, and the teacher told him, okay, here are 35 students, take the 35 students uh, and make the uh, sampling process on them. The problem here, because it's not uh, random sampling, depends on the probability distribution and the equal chance for each sample unit to represent or to be chosen. Here, it's uh, though it's convenient, but it may not represent the population as it's supposed to be. The fourth one is the quota sampling. What about the quota sampling? Quota sampling using middle school directory. The researchers select the first 20, uh, 20th, six grade boys. The first 26 grade girls and the 20, first 27th grade boys and the first 27 grade girls and the first 28 grade boys and the first 28 grade girls. These children and their parents are contacted. So this is, we call it quota sampling. Quota means I will take a quota from each one. From each one, I will take a quota. Again, again, we'll say. Using the middle school directory, the researchers select first 20 students out of grade six, okay, boys. And 20 from grade six, uh, the first seven grade he will take boys, he will take 20, and he will take also from that grade 20 for the girls then they would be contacted, the parents would be contacted to come and get this, their kids with them for the sampling. Simple, easy, convenient, simple, easy, very convenient. No complete uh, list is, is required. The list is not required here in the quota sampling, but it may not be representative also for the population. It might be also not representative for the population. Again, I would say the quota, the quota using the middle school directory as example, the researcher selects the first 20 students boys and the first 20 students girls of grade six. Then first 20 students boys and first 20 students girls from grade seven. First 20 uh, students boys and first 20 students girls from grade eight. It's very simple, very easy. This is advantageous, very convenient. No complete number is needed, but it may not be representative for the whole population. That is regarding the quotas. We've talked today about the four types, random sampling, simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, convenience sampling, and quota sampling. And those are the four types of sampling. Shall see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.